everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to show you how to make a pop-up birthday cake card. So I've done many pop-up cards before. There's quite a few of this style around and I thought I would have a go at it. So this is my measurements and style and stuff and this is kind of like just my take on it really. So this is just a prototype. I started doing it and then I realised actually it's a bit too higher than I'd like. So the one I'm going to make, I've just adapted the measurements a bit more. So 5 by 7 card, open it up and you have this birthday cake that pops out. Now I don't like the gap that I've got here so I'm going to pull mine down and actually I've got something else that I want to pop up here. So again it's very very easy once you see how it's done then you can adapt this and it can be done in any size card that you want as well. But I thought it was really nice, really fun. I love the candles that I've added all around each of the tiers there to the birthday cake. Obviously this is for a birthday but this would look lovely for a wedding cake so if you wanted to do it as a wedding card that would be great. So I'm going to pop that to one side. I am using the candle and the yay for the next one and this is the first edition build your own cupcake and I use this for the pop out panel card that I done um, and another card as well I think. It's really lovely. I do enjoy this one so again I'll share all the links to everything I use as always. Okay, so for this one I've done a template because although it is very easy, I think it's much easier for me to point to this for you to then be able to see because we're working on a white card. It can be quite confusing, I think. So that's that, which I'll go through in a moment. As I said, it's a five by seven card. So this is a five by seven card blank and I just cut this from a piece of 10 by seven and along the 10 inch side, I scored at five inches and folded in half. This is the Paper Mania do crafts colossal cardstock that I like to use. This is only 260, but because I'm adding this card inside and then I'll be matting and layering on the front, it ends up becoming very strong. So that's that piece. And then for the piece that we're gonna be actually cutting into that goes inside, so recap with this one here, this white piece is separate that I've stuck in and that's what we're cutting with here. And this is a piece of six and three quarters by nine and three quarters. So I've just pulled it in by a quarter of an inch on each side there. That's that piece and then you just want bits and pieces to decorate. So I'd already gone and cut my bunting, I've cut all of my candles, I've got my yay that I'm going to add in, I've also cut another yay because I wasn't sure if I would use one or two. So I've done all of that off camera because that's just boring to watch. <laughs> and then this is the paper pack, Forever Free, that I'm using today, really nice. Not much of my 8x8 left now, I've used so much of it, but it is a lovely paper pack. And then to decorate the cake, so you need something for both sides of all the three tiers there. So the bottom one is a two by two square. So I've just come in by one eighth of an inch. So this is one and seven eighths of an inch squared. You need two pieces. The next one is a one and a half by one and a half square. So I've come in to one and three eighths of an inch squared. Again, two pieces. And then the top one is a one by one square. So you probably guessed it. You need a seven eighths of an inch squared piece and you need two of those. Okay, so I'll come off a little bit there as long as you can see this bit of the cake. So with this uh, nine and three quarters by six and three quarters, along the nine and three quarters side, you want to score at four and seven eighths of an inch, which is halfway. Just got that all off the top of my head. Let me double check. Yep, four and seven eighths of an inch and then fold in half. Okay, so although I've put in here cut lines are the blank lines and I've done a blank line right through the middle, I have highlighted that that is actually your middle score line, do not cut. <laughs> so if you are looking back at that, you don't want to cut down through there. But that is now that middle score line. Then what you want to do, now this is optional how high up you come. So on this one that I've done here, I came up and started my first cut at one inch. But looking at it now, I just think it's too, it looks like it's just floating, just doesn't quite look right. So this time I've come up by half an inch, okay? But depending on what you're gonna have up here, you know, you might wanna come down even more. You might wanna just come up a quarter of an inch or you might be happy to come up that um, one inch because you may not be adding candles here. Because if those candles were taken off, it's actually balanced because that's one inch there and one inch there, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. With this one, by the time now I've got this, I've got, how much have I got three at the top? One and three quarters, but I'm going to be having that yay there. So that's filling up that space, so that's why I've done it, okay? So, first of all, what you want to do is you want to mark these crosses at these different measurements here. So, come up first of all, from that in that centre score line, come up at half an inch and put a little cross there. Okay, then from that half an inch, you want to come up two inches. So in total, that's two and a half. But if you just do it from each cross, so from that cross, you're coming up two inches. 
put another little cross. Then from that cross, you're coming up one and a half inches, put a little cross, and then from that one, you're coming up one inch. And I've marked that here, so two inches, one and a half, and one. Okay, so they, you should have those four crosses. Then from those four crosses, what I find easiest is to lie your ruler on it, and you want to come out two inches on each side. So if you lie your ruler down here, oh, just come up a little bit there, I'm trying to keep everything in so you can see. If you pop your ruler in and make sure that the two inches is lying on that middle score line, then basically all you need to do is draw a line from the very end here all the way up to four inches. So that means you've got two inches on this side and two inches on that side. Then you want to come up to that next cross and again you're going to do the same. So two inches and you're just going to do a pencil line all the way across. So it's a four inch line. Okay. Now the next one when you come up you want to put the one and a half marker in the centre of the score line on your ruler and then you're going to draw a pencil three inches. Okay. And then the last one you're going to come up and put the one inch marker on your ruler in the middle of that score line and you're just going to draw a line that is two inches long. Okay. So now you should have two and two two and two, one and a half and one and a half and one and one. Okay, so I've got two, 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 one and a half, one and a half, one and one. Next we want to do these score lines. You'll see I've just done little dash marks just to highlight that these are score lines and I've also popped it there as well. The easiest way to do these is just, I'm going to remove that just for a minute just because I need a bit more space with the angle that I do this. So I'm going to grab my stylus here and just pop your ruler down. I'm going to start with the top one here. You want to make sure it's really straight. So what I would say, actually, I'm going to bring in my T-square ruler here because I can make sure this is really straight. And you just want to line it up. I'm going to start from the top, so the very edge of this pencil mark here. And I'm going to score down to that next pencil line. Okay, so I've just scored that one there, which is this one here. So you're just scoring it down to that one there. Okay, then the next one I'm going to come across and score again, making sure it's nice and straight, which is why the T-square ruler is good for this, because it will make sure you are dead straight. So now I've just scored this one here. Now I'm going to score that one. Now this one is the only one that will join perfectly from cut line to cut line, because that's your base. So you can see there, that score line marries up. All the rest will join down into that cut line, you see. But this one, you just want to make sure. So here, there it is. I'm going to join it up to that one there. So again, just line that all up. Okay. So now you just want to do the same on the opposite side. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Next, you're going to do some cutting. So we are now going to cut along each of these lines. So this, basically, where you've done all the crosses, you're going to cut every one of those lines. So all that will be left is these dashes, and that's the score lines. So I've got my metal ruler, which I've just put away, bring that back out, and I've got my blade here. So I'm going to start from the top. Again, it should be nice and straight. Watch your fingers and just cut that one. Like so. So if I just bring that one up, you can see now I've just cut across there. And go down, do the next one. Again, you can see there, so now I've got those two cut lines, and I'm just going to do the last two here. Okay, so now you should have these four cut lines. Right, next I'm going to rub out everything because you don't want that all in there now, so we'll get rid of that before we just fold it all into place. Okay, so all you should be left with now is these four cut lines and then score lines all down here and all down here. And then obviously that score line that goes right through the middle. Next, you want to lift out the cake. So you want the cake, all the cake pieces to come towards you, and then you want your score line of the center of the card to go away from you. So what I would say is if you just start to kind of bend all those score lines at each side of the cake tiers, like so. So you basically you're creating, everything should be a valley fold. You can see even that's 
a valley fold and all these are valley folds and then you should be able to fold the whole thing over okay which I can and it should all line up I might have to work it a little bit but I'm happy with that so now when I open that you can see we've got our pop out and that's it so it's very easy it's just following I guess you know those measurements and just making sure that you really do make sure that you get your score lines perfectly lining up with where those cut lines are I will share all the other pop-up cards that I've done because I've done quite a few now so there's lots of different variations and ways to obviously change this as well so next you just want to sit it in your card base make sure you've got a nice border all the way around which you should do and then you'll know it's all going to work okay because what you don't want to do is decorate it all and then go to stick it in and realize something's off so you're best doing that now because the worst case is you have to redo that bit that you don't want to have to rip everything apart so just check it and if you're happy with it then we'll move on now to decorating it so i find it better to just flatten everything again and then once you start adding these lovely little mats it will start to bring that actual cake to life so the biggest ones make sure i've got my flowers the right way up are going to go right down there there wouldn't there won't be much of a border if any with these ones because they're just slightly smaller if you want more of a border then obviously you're going to reduce them down more but they will be like so okay so stick them all down now okay so now they're stuck down you can really see it starts to come together now I'm going to stick my candles in obviously you know, you know I'm aware not everybody will have this die set but what you can do is just cut some you know silver strips just some very very you know these are tiny let me just grab my ruler I keep putting it back and I always use it so they're a quarter of an inch wide and although a lot of this gets hidden behind each one they're two inches high so if you were to just cut you know strips like that then you can still get this effect so what I'm going to do is this here so I've stuck three along the two inch boxes at the bottom and they're tucked in behind two on the one and a half and then one on that one but what I'm probably going to do is not do the candles on the top here and I'm going to add this yay so what I've done is I die cut the yay which is like that so that's it flat but because this card's obviously going to fold in half I've gone and folded it right through the a there so that now when I add that in that will fold with the card so when it opens it's going to stand out like so and I just think that looks really nice at the top of the cake so that will get stuck down there and then all of the candles throughout so I'll pop it on high speed now just so you can see how I'm doing it all and then I'll be back when it's all done Okay, so that's everything decorated. I'm really pleased with this version. I think having that shorter area there, it just looks a lot more balanced now. And then I went ahead and added the bunting. This is bunting that I purchased from the works a while back. I did share links to it. I don't know if it's still available on their website, but I will share it if I can. But they're really handy and I've used them. They're perfect for birthday cards. Well, for any nice occasion cards, but that's that all ready to go now. And I'm really happy with it. Um, another thing I would say is I'm using this Aline's Tacky Glue. It dries, although it says tacky, it doesn't ever stay tacky. It dries completely clear. Um, so make sure if you are using a wet glue when you're sticking anything behind that it does dry completely and it isn't tacky. Because the last thing you want is when you go to sandwich this all together, it sticks see this won't stick now because it's all dry and that I'm really happy with the way that I folded that A because that does fold nicely you can see there and everything bounces back up so next we need to stick it all in here I'm just going to sit it in just to make sure yes that purple frame around it really does make that pop love it love it love it right easiest way to stick this down is I'm going to use I'm going to actually use the new dot and dab this is the permanent roller tape or runner tape from uh, Trimcraft but it's their dot and dab range so I'm gonna run this along obviously you can use double sided tape whatever's easiest but this is quite handy to be able to just kind of get into all these little bits here 
Now I've used a lot more than I probably need to, but I'm just, it's the first time using it, so I just want to make sure this is not going to come apart. I'm doing one side at a time, and just like I do most of my pop-up cards, sit the non-sticky side down first, and make sure you line it up with the border that it should have. So just make sure it's even on all four sides. Pull it out a little bit from the score line, because because there's a lot of bulk and you're folding it in on itself, it does need a little bit of space for that. So I'm going to bring that in and then I'm going to just, I'm going to lift the top up first actually because I just want to make sure this is, so I'm going to fold it that way and stick that because I'd rather see exactly how this is going to look than folding it all over. Now I'm going to fold it on that side and you can really push down now and make sure that's all stuck down. It seems to stick really well so, so far so good. Get right in there, there we go, so that's one side all nicely secure and then this side here I'm just going to go again and now I can just fold this one over although I'm saying that I'm going to do it I'm going to lift it up still slightly just there we go just to kind of tack it there and then I can fold it all down you really make sure that's stuck and there you have it I absolutely love that I think that is such a special card I'd love to receive that myself so my birthday is not for a while now. I've had my birthday, but if anybody wants to send me this one, <laughs> that would be nice. So yeah, that is that done. So now I'm just going to decorate the front. Okay, so I've just cut these two pieces here. So I've used this lovely um, shimmery cardstock. This was actually part of the Fairy Tales uh, Dovecraft collection, so I will link that in. Um, but obviously, you know, any kind of colours or papers that you've got will work. So this is four and three quarters by it's six and three quarters so this is five by seven that's my standard mat size when I use five by seven so you'll see there that just give you a nice even border and then the layer there to go on top should be yep four and a half by six and a half and that's going to stick on top again and then it's literally down to you how you're going to decorate I'm just going to because I haven't got any sentiment on this and it's a birthday card I've got my happy birthday sentiments here I love my um, tattered lace this is the happy birthday here but I also like this one here which my mum gave me so I'm going to use one of those I'm probably not going to do that on camera because it is just die cutting and sticking down so I'll just share the pictures with you over on my blog and um, you'll see them at the beginning of the video anyway so I'm just going to get this down okay so there is the finished card so I went for the happy birthday here the circular one and I die cut it from some of the Dovecraft holographic cardstock again I'll share all of this in my links but it looks really nice I kept it really simple because all of the hard work and the wow factor is obviously inside you can see there that nice sparkle from the shimmer paper and I also pop this paper here on some foam adhesive so you can just see there just underneath just to give it again a little bit of dimension and then when you open it up wow you've got that beautiful card inside now you can write your messages here if you want but I am going to put mine on the back so when I do go to use this card I'll just stick a piece of white paper on the back the same size as these I'll probably do a map down a layer as well on the back and then I can stamp and write my ish um my issue <laughs> stamp and write my message there on the back but there you have it guys really lovely card really fun and yeah I hope the person that receives this really likes it and I hope you do too so if you did please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more thanks for watching bye